After hours of deliberation, the verdict is reached in the case of a former Albuquerque cop behind a deadly crash. Matt is in the newsplex with what the jury decided. Matt. Liz, uh, he is guilty of careless driving, not guilty of vehicular homicide. That is what the jury decided after seven hours of deliberating. The verdicts are as follows in state of New Mexico versus Adam Casaus. We find the defendant guilty of careless driving. Silence filled the courtroom after those words were read. The mother of Ashley and Lindsey Browder, the two girls who were in the SUV that Casaus hit, sobbed quietly. It's been a year and a half since prosecutors say Casaus, who was off duty, sped through a red light on his way home, killing Ashley and severely hurting her sister Lindsey. Prosecutors wanted Casaus to get up to nine years in prison for vehicular homicide and reckless driving. Now he'll get at most 90 days in jail for careless driving, which is a misdemeanor. Some of the folks here are going to prefer a different verdict than other folks. Whatever happens, a tragedy has occurred. Casaus claims he was going after a dangerous, possibly drunk driver at the time of the crash, something no one could prove. APD fired him a few months later, but now he wants to be a cop again. He is set to be sentenced in December. He will stay out of jail until then. Meanwhile, the Browder family has filed a lawsuit against the city in federal court. Well, today, Rio Reba County commissioners in just a few hours will decide whether they can put the sheriff-elect, James Lujan, in office as interim sheriff. The current sheriff is still a convicted felon, Tommy Rodella. He is refusing to give up his post, even as he sits behind bars this morning. Yesterday, county leaders asked for Rodella to resign again, and again, through his attorney, he said no. Rodella was convicted by a federal jury Friday for violating a driver's civil rights and a gun charge. That gun charge alone gets him a mandatory seven years in federal prison. He faces 10 more years on the other charge when he is sentenced in December. The district attorney filed a petition to formally remove Rodella from office yesterday. He lost his bid for re-election in June to James Lujan. Lujan was not supposed to take over until sheriff until December. Again, that meeting starts at 10 this morning in the commission chambers on Industrial Park Road. Liz. The fallout continues this morning over the controversial comments made by an APD officer hours before he shot a homeless camper in the foothills earlier this year. We spoke with Mayor RJ Berry and Police Chief Gordon Eden about the comments that were made by Officer Keith Sandy. This all centers around video where you can hear Sandy calling Boyd a quote effing lunatic and saying that he was going to be using force against the mentally ill man before he was briefed on the situation or before he even saw Boyd. Now, both the mayor and the chief took issue with Sandy calling James Boyd a lunatic. But in those rare, rare occasions where somebody does not do the right things, and in this case, any officer calling someone a lunatic uh, in that situation, in my opinion, is it does not live up to the standards of the Albuquerque Police Department. Our policies strictly prohibit that type of language from our officers. However, neither official would go near Sandy's comment about using force on Boyd. Both say they couldn't because of the federal investigation that is going on. Now, the mayor and the chief also would not fully address Sandy's employment, only saying that he's been placed on administrative leave since the shooting. Meanwhile, the APD investigation of the Boyd shooting is now in the hands of the DA's office. They will review it and decide if Sandy and Dominic Perez, the other officer who shot at Boyd, will be charged. We have a lot more coverage on our website. Go to KRQE.com. There you can hear the full interviews with Mayor Barry, the police chief, and of course the video and audio of the shooting as well. The charges against the mom that state police shot at last year have been tossed out, but she is not off the hook just yet. It's a new twist in the case that got national attention because it was caught on tape right here in New Mexico. Remember when state police pulled over Oriana Farrell last October for speeding and then that traffic stop spun out of control. The state police officer shot at Farrell's minivan as she took off with her five kids inside. Here's dash cam video of that. That officer lost his job. But Farrell was the only one criminally charged in the case. She was indicted for aggravated fleeing and child abuse. However, we have learned a relative of the officer who fired at Farrell was on the grand jury that indicted her. The district attorney dismissed that juror before the indictment, but an appeals court judge ruled that only a judge can dismiss grand jurors. Because of that misstep, the appeals court has ordered the district court to drop Farrell's charges. But this case is not over just yet. They had nothing to do with the evidence that was presented. It only had to do with the procedural uh, matters, so that's why we're uh, going back to the grand jury. 
The district attorney says he'll bring the case before another grand jury next month. The price tag to reopen the waste isolation pilot plant could top $240 million. The underground nuclear waste site near Carlsbad has been shut down for months. A barrel of nuclear waste leaked in February, exposing 22 workers to low levels of radiation. The exact cause of the leak is still under investigation, and the feds are reworking procedures at the plant. The goal is to reopen the WIP site by 2016. The 506 now, those hoping to get their flu shots at one of UNM's free clinics will have to wait at least a few weeks because of manufacturing issues with the latest vaccine. The hospital now expects to get those vaccines toward the middle or even the end of this month. Now, flu season usually gets busy in December, so doctors say you still have plenty of time to get vaccinated, even with the delay. Now, for a list of other flu shot clinics in your area, head to our website at krqe.com and click on links. Well, the Ebola outbreak that has killed thousands of people in West Africa is hitting the U.S. with the first case of the virus confirmed and diagnosed in Texas. Yeah, the whole country talking about this right now. And the state's governor down in Texas, Rick Perry, is expected to hold a news conference on the situation today. The unidentified patient <coughs> is in isolation getting treatment at a Dallas hospital. Authorities are saying that they're trying to track down the patient's relatives and friends that the patient may have visited after showing symptoms of the potentially deadly virus. It is certainly possible that someone who had contact with this individual, a family member or other individual, could develop Ebola in the coming weeks. But there is no doubt in my mind that we will stop it here. Here's what else we know. The patient left Liberia on September 19th and arrived in the U.S. on the 20th. He did not have symptoms at that time, but a few days later he did and was hospitalized and isolated on Sunday. Because Ebola can only be passed on through direct contact with bodily fluids like blood, whatnot, officials aren't worried about anyone on the flight being infected. Crew members who transported the patient to the hospital on Sunday are not showing signs or symptoms, but are at home right now in quarantine for the time being. 508 is now the time. It is October 1st, and it's time to start thinking about the holidays, and that means it's Toys for Tots time. The city and the U.S. Marines are teaming up to make this charity a success once again. They will collect toys and hand them out to about 10,000 underprivileged kids. If you are a family in need, you can register your child starting tomorrow. Now, registration runs through December 4th for New Mexico residents with kids from 6 months old to 10 years old. To sign up, head on over to our website, krqe.com. We've got a link for you there. If you can donate a toy for the program, the program really needs you. Again, you can go to our website for information on how to help out.